Jesus is irrelevant. The world tells us that religion is irrelevant. I don't need God. I don't want God. He has no place in my life and Jesus and what he has done is irrelevant to what's going on in my life and in the world today. Like the Athenians in uh, the Acts of the Apostles where Paul goes to preach to them in the Decapolis. They say, we'll hear you another day. We don't have time for you. The message you carry doesn't matter. But we stand before the world and we say it does matter. Jesus is relevant. Jesus is the reason for our hope. And he is the rock on which we stand in the midst of the storms and wind and the rain. And we have to remember that it was the pride and arrogance of Caesar Augustus who wanted to count his people, count the people that he ruled. He wanted to count the people who bowed down to his name as the God. Well, that little governmental mandate led to the birth of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem. Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem, to the city of David, to the house of bread, because the government made them, pushed them to Bethlehem, just so that some governor could count his subjects, because he wanted to puff himself up in pride and arrogance. But yet, God cannot be outdone. God permits these things, why? to fulfill the scriptures. And in, in his eternal providence, God allowed that pride and arrogance to stay so that his son might be born for us and save us from our sins. And Our Lady knew this. Nine months pregnant, she realizes that she has to take this long journey with her husband, whom she loves, on terrible roads, four to five days away, just to acquiesce to this governmental mandate. She sets out in her heart pondering God's plan in sending her and Joseph to Bethlehem at a time when she was pregnant. She was ready to give birth. She knew the hard roads. She knew this long journey, but she put her trust in God. She knew the plan of God was for her benefit. She knew that both her and Joseph would embrace God's plan and that we will go, not knowing what they were in for, not knowing that their friends and relatives would rebuke them. There's no room for you here. Joseph explaining to his own family members, listen, we came from Nazareth. We have come a long journey. We just need a place to stay. Look at my wife, she's pregnant. And them say no. Joseph, your message is irrelevant to us. There's no room for you here. Can you imagine the rejection of St. Joseph? Can you imagine our blessed mother just a few feet away hearing his flesh and blood say no to the Son of God? Can you imagine having doors closed in their face and saying, we don't want what you're carrying? Your message is irrelevant to our house. But they were undaunted. Undaunted, Joseph, knowing the plan of God from the revelation of God through that angel, he knew that this son was special. This son was the son of God. This was the fulfillment of everyone's anticipation, Jew and Gentile alike. So St. Joseph knocked on so many doors and finally found that cave, found that little manger in the midst of all of those animals, a cave of Bethlehem where the Son of God would be born. And Mary knowing that her husband has her best interest in heart, that he has been appointed by God to protect, guide, and provi provide for them. So she knew something's coming. God's got something in store that is gonna be great, going to be amazing, and his plan is going to be revealed in a way like the world has never seen. And that's what we celebrate today. 
the nativity of our Lord and Savior, born in a manger, born to transform the world, to bring relevance to human nature again. We have lost through sin and death and through the pride of Adam and Eve, we lost God's grace, we lost that union with God, and so he said, I will go. The second person of the Blessed Trinity said, I will go. I will take on human nature. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and now I will redeem them. In the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that those who are under the law might find freedom. Yeah, God's irrelevant. Jesus is irrelevant. Don't, don't worry about him. He's got nothing to do with your life. Are you kidding me? For St. Joseph and our Blessed Mother, the fact that they were together in this difficulty meant the world. They knew that God had a plan. They knew that together, through God's grace, through the union of their hearts as husband and wife and in union with God, they would be okay. They would persevere. Living in that present crisis, Joseph would be comforted just by Mary's eyes or her gentle smile, knowing that she loved him. It would be okay. We'll find a place, Joseph. Be patient with God. What a wife. What a life. Knowing that she was carrying the Son of God, G Joseph knew. He knew that this was an important task to find this cave. But he knew God would provide. He knew God would change their circumstances. And what a blessed vision that was for those shepherds, those humble simpletons who the angel said, go to Bethlehem, you'll see a babe in swaddling clothes. And he is the one who will save us from our sins. He will be the one the King of kings, the Prince of peace. He is the fulfillment of the prophecies. So bring your sheep and go and see this babe lying in a manger. That will be the sign to tell you which one, which baby, the one that's in the manger in swaddling clothes. He will save us. And these shepherds come and bow their knee before their God made flesh. And all Mary and Joseph did was marvel at the wonderful things God was doing. Mary pondered all these things in her heart. Yet God's irrelevant. You should just dismiss him because he has nothing to do with our life. Nothing to do with our life. In that stable in Bethlehem, a child was born for us and St. Jose Maria Escriva says, God humbled himself to allow us to get near him so that we could give our love in exchange for his. So that our freedom might bow, not at the sight of his power merely, but before the wonder of his humility, that he came to us as a child, a child who could not speak and was so vulnerable that needed Joseph to protect him, needed to be nourished by our blessed mother, Yeah, God's irrelevant. Brothers and sisters, as the letter to the Hebrews tells us, in times past, God spoke in various ways to our ancestors through the prophets, but in these, the last days, he speaks to us. He has spoken to us through his son, whom he made heir of all things and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of God's glory, the very imprint of his being and who sustains all things by his mighty word. That babe in the manger could not yet talk. And yet he was the word of God. Yet he was the one anointed to bring glad tidings to those who walk in the valley of darkness and the shadow of death. He was the one who would make the deaf hear, make the mute speak. He would be the one to rise from the dead so that we might rise again in the, the end of time when he calls all of us back. St. Leo the Great says, today a savior is born. There can be no room for sadness when life has been born. That life which overcomes the fear of death and fills us with the joy of the pledge of eternity. 
Nobody should feel excluded from sharing in such joy. Our reason for rejoicing is common to all because our Lord, destroyer of sin and death, not finding anyone free of sin, has come to free us all. Let the just man rejoice as victory approaches. Let the Gentiles rejoice, for he is called to life. For the Son, in the fullness of time, assumed our human nature in order to reconcile the human race with its creator. Jesus came to bring light to the darkness, to give hope to the sick and the weak, to move the mountain of obstacles to our union with God, to melt the hearts that are cold and indifferent to his presence, to bring peace to a violent world. He came so that governors, kings, queens, presidents, and bodies of nations might realize that they have no power over men unless it be given to them from on high, unless God permits it. Jesus says that as he's before Pilate. That doctors and scientists might know that any and all developments, any and all breakthroughs are only a slim participation in the healing that comes from this little babe in the manger. And St. John records, to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by man's choice, but of God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, his, the glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth, and he has given us grace upon grace. Yeah, God is irrelevant. Religion is dead. God is dead, even that Nietzsche said. But those are lies. Those are lies because God is so relevant. Even though men and women reject him, even though men and women decide to impart their will upon other people, because there is violence in the world, because there is sin and death, we need God more than ever. He is more relevant now to us who walk in the valley of the shadow of death, to us who need a shepherd, who need a prince of peace, who need a king of kings. We need our sins to be forgiven. God is more relevant now when sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. And man needs someone to save him. So this presence of the newborn child, he is love among us. God is love, as John records earlier in his gospel. And the world is no longer a place of darkness. Jesus, the light has come. We do not walk in darkness anymore. The light has come. He came to free us. And to those who seek love, they now know where to find it. Those who seek healing now know where to find it. Those who suffer know where they will be consoled. Those who are burdened and heavy laden by their sins know that there is mercy for them that endures forever. That human weakness, human suffering, nothing in this world is greater than the love of God for us and for all of us. So this mystery that Joseph, St. Joseph and our Blessed Mother Mary witnessed, that she pondered in her heart, that Joseph nurtured, the Jesus Christ that he held in his arms, the Jesus that Mary showed to the shepherds and the wise men, this Jesus who suffered and died for our sins comes to us today in Holy Communion. And that babe who will say one day, this is my body given up for you. This is my blood shed for love of you, for the forgiveness of the sins, for this new covenant that I am making with my people. This babe is the one that we receive here at this Mass so that we might participate in him, might, we might imitate him, that we might be freed from every sin, every darkness, every devilish deceit and lie that the world tells us we might still have hope. Hope not in this world, 
but hope that the refulgence of God might come down upon those who are so cold and so indifferent and think that God is irrelevant, that God will be their everything, not just relevant to them, but their everything, their rock, their strength, their hope, their faith, their love, because that's the message that we proclaim to this world. Jesus Christ is Lord, and may he reign now and forever. Amen.